I used to sell drugs for my dad when I was a kid. He thought that it was easier for people to get a bag from a kid than it would be from an adult. Did you ever get into any like legal trouble? Did you ever have to go to prison or jail or anything? Yes, I spent two years in state jail. I got caught with two pounds of weed on the interstate. Hello? Hey, what's up, man? What's up? Is this Lyle? It, yeah, it says here that your name is Dubious. Yeah. What's up, Dubious? Oh, not much. Just uh, hanging out after a long day of work. What's happening with you? Um, I'm 30 years old, and um, like, I started being a drug dealer when I was 16. I'm not anymore. I have a family and stuff now, and it was just um, sometimes it's hard for me to accept the transition that has been made in my life, like the calmness of it, the um. Uh, I don't have to feel like somebody's going to come around the corner and mess me up or something like that. I don't have to feel like I'm going to be pulled over and get sent to prison immediately. Uh, Ten years ago, I was still in prison, and then now I'm a father of three, and uh, I don't do much anymore. <laughs> Just mm. working home, and that's it. Uh, how long were you in the, the game for? Um, Let's see. I... Um, I used to sell drugs for my dad when I was a kid, but whenever I started doing it myself, I was, uh, 16 years old and I did it steadily until I was 19, until I went to prison. You sold them for your dad? Yes. Um, uh, my dad used to, um, sell booger sugar and, um, he thought that it was easier for people to get a bag from a kid than it would be from an adult. That way it was less conspicuous, I guess, for him. So he would um, sit me in the room and lay money out and go, this is what the money that you'll get will look like. Um, if it doesn't look like any of these, uh, don't give them the bag and come back inside. But Were you, then, were you ever in any danger doing that? Yes. Uh, one time... Um, I was almost kidnapped by somebody. Uh, CPS was called a bunch of times, so I was. There was a bunch of times where I sat in a in the back seat of a car while my dad's house was being raided and stuff. <laughs> hmm. Do you still? What's your relationship like with your dad these days? Um, he died last year, but I mean, previous to that, it wasn't. It wasn't very good. It was never really a good relationship. It was. He was, um, I mean, other than the drug, than selling, than having your kids sell drugs for you, was, uh, he wasn't the best dad. What's going on with your mom? Uh, she passed away when I was 14. Mm -hmm. um, she did not like it, but um, uh, I guess she felt like she was stuck with him. Uh, she died too young for me. I was too young for me to like uh, ask her what was going on, what she thought, and things like that. Hmm. Hmm. And uh, did you ever get into any like legal trouble? Did you ever have to go to prison or jail or anything? Yes, I spent uh, two years in state jail for. Um, I got caught with two pounds of weed on the interstate, going from Colorado to Texas. And uh, yeah, I gave them a fake name. I was on the run already for two years, for some other things that I had done previous to that, and uh, that just. That was the last domino, I guess, or the straw that broke the camel's back, and everything just pretty much collapsed underneath me at that point. Now, um, is there? Have you like served your time already for for everything? Are you are you worried at all about any parts of your past life kind of coming back to you? Um, maybe the only part that I'd be a little worried about would be the thing that I told you in the text message. But other than that. I served my time for what I went to jail for, and as far as the um, legalities of the other things go, I think that there's been enough time that I'm okay to speak about some of these things. Okay. Mm. Mm. What was I going to say? I don't know why I keep... I, this is stupid, but I'm think, I've just played Red Dead Redemption, which is about a guy who used to like be in a gang, but... He's, like, yeah. turning his life around. Yeah, I, just, I just finished that game myself, too. It's a good game. So I'm like, you kind of remind me of John Marston. 
Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, um, what uh, uh, what was it like in prison, man? Um, dude, it was. I mean, like you hear stories and shit, and then mm, I first went in, and then I talked to people. The first week was okay, and then after the first month, they saw my first stabbing, and then um, my first month and a half, I saw um, a grown man's butthole get taken away from him unwillingly, pretty in pretty close vicinity. So that was that was one of those moments where I was like, "You, you, um, you ever see those movies where people go to prison and there's always that one guy that's crying and he's like, I don't belong here. Mm-hmm. Totally mm-hmm. felt like that after I saw that happen. I was mm-hmm. like, bro, I was just selling drugs. Dude, I was just selling weed. I don't mm-hmm. belong here. I don't feel like I should mm-hmm. be in here with you people. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Do you ever find Other it crazy that, um, when you go into like a weed shop in Denver or California and it's like a fucking Apple store and you can pay for it with a credit card and you're like, Fuck, man, I went to prison for something that's, like, you can buy with a fucking credit card at a store at this place. Yeah, it's still wild. I live in a legal state now, so it's um, it's definitely crazy. It, it's a wild thought to think that I went to prison for two years for that. And now I can just go literally buy what I went to prison for and bring it home and just be totally fine. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. I feel like I interrupted you. There was something else you were going to say about prison. Um, let's see. Other than that, it was just uh, you go about your business and stuff. Um, it was racially divided. So not only was it racially divided, it was um, your race would walk up to you and they'd ask you what part of the state you're from. And then they would point you to the direction of people that are from that area. And then you go hang out with those people. And those are the people that you stick with until you leave or until, or unless you decide to do like your own thing. Like it's not always so much of a protection thing, but just like, you're not, they, they don't really want you to associate with other races. Did you, was, was there a pressure ever to like fight with, with the other races or else have your gang like beat you up? Yes, um, there was one instance where uh, I was at lunch and somebody took my my fruit off my tray, and um, the guy the the guy that took it was like, uh, "This is mine, and that's it, right?" And I was like, "No, nah, man, I'm gonna need you to put that back." And then uh, three other gentlemen walked up behind him, and uh, he's like, "Yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen," and I I just shut up and I let them walk away, and then uh, after that. Another gentleman walked up and sat next to me. He was like, hey, bro, uh, that shit just happened in front of everybody. Dude, you can't let that shit slide. Uh, you're going to have to you're going to have to uh, handle that. And uh, I, di- I didn't know what to do. I was like, I don't know what to do, bro. Like, do I beat him up or what? It's like, you know, I'm just I'm new here. And he uh, scoffed at me, went fucking you guys and just got up and walked away. And I was like, I don't I don't really know what that means, man. Like, I'm fucking you here. Like. I took that as in like you're supposed to know what's going on here already and shit like that and I was I'm like still a new guy and shit and um someone sold me a um a knife for protection and uh they told me to go use that on him and things would be okay for me uh I didn't use it on him but I did end up fighting him uh I got beat up severely and I went to the uh hospital in prison for that for like maybe like a month and a half Cause I got jumped by him and his buddies, but I was okay with my people and I was okay with his people because, um, I guess I had stepped up to him and it was, it was what they call a heart check. They just needed to see where I was and if I was going to be a welcome mat to everybody in the prison or if I was going to be a person that was like, not so much that you had to watch out for, but someone that you were just like, yeah, yeah, don't mess with him. He's all right. He, he minds his own, you know? Somebody gave you a knife to use on him. Oh, I had to buy that knife. Uh, I bought that knife. And after the guy scoffed at me and called me a new guy, someone else walked up and they're like, hey, man, I got what you need. Follow me. Followed him up to his cell. And he was like, uh, here's this knife. Uh, you owe me this much for it. I think it was like 30, 40 bucks. And uh, yeah, he was like, uh, use this and uh, go fuck him up. But make sure that it's in front of everybody. So everybody knows that you're handling what happened today. And now that. 
how does that conflict with like I assume that if you're beating people up in prison or stabbing people, do they add that on to your sentence? Does that it fuck depends? With- it depends on the severity of it. Uh, if it was just a fight, you get tossed in the hole and you get maybe another two weeks or a month added to your time. But it was two for one for me. So like every two days is worth or what was it? Yeah, every two days would be one day or every every one day is worth two days is what they would told me every one day is worth two days yes but i either way i still did two years time because that's that's what i was sent into sentenced to in sentenced to in court so that's that's what i ended up doing and did anyone else ever try to fuck with you after that or did, did you eventually kind of get into your own and, no everything and... just uh it smoothed out after that and uh i spent the rest of my time there uh hanging out with people learning how to draw uh i did a couple drugs in there but then you once you find out how those drugs come in there you're like oh, i don't really want to do that stuff no more and, uh, i yeah, assume I they come in time. in people's assholes yeah for the most part yeah what kind of drugs um i smoked weed but there's there was a lot of drugs in there there's a lot of drugs. But it's just mm-hmm. like being in the streets, but just in a confined space. How old were you when you got out? I was 21. Wow, so you got in when you were 19. Yes. That's fucking tough, man. Hmm. It was it was wild. <laughs> it was and did wild. the did did the dealing cease when you got out or did you go back for more? Um I didn't deal as hard as I used to, but I still dealed because it was something that I was used to doing. It was a like a quick buck, I guess, for me. It was, it was just an easy way to get money, so I didn't really have to worry about a job. And so I started having kids, and then I, that started to change. Mm-hmm. Even though it was just weed, I still didn't want to. I didn't want to sell anymore. Like there was times where I would. Uh, get home from work and then have to back up stuff and go sell and my son would be like let's hang out let's play or something and I'd be like oh buddy I'll be right back I gotta do something real quick and mm-hmm. I just it bummed me out to hear that from him and I felt like I was being my father so I just I felt like it was better for me to stop mm-hmm. how long ago did you stop um let's see it's been six years now so I mm-hmm. stopped when I was 24 mm-hmm when did you have your kid? Um, shoot, my first kid I had when I was 16. My second kid I had when I was 23. And then I'm on, I'm on my third kid now that will be due in November. Wow. What was up with your kid while you were in jail? Um, my youngest one, I do not have the best relationship with. He thinks that uh, I left because I didn't love him. So, like, I'm trying my best to fix that as much as I can. But um, it was it's the way he felt growing up with me not being there or me being in and out of his life. And uh, his mom's not a huge fan of me. So there's always that, too. Mm. Yeah, but I was going to ask that, I too. I'm not the best person ever. I was going to ask that, too. What's uh, uh, Do you still have a relationship at all with the woman that you had the kid with at 16? Um, no, I have more relationship with my son now than I do with her. Every time me and her talk, it's always a fight. Mm -hmm. And no matter how much I feel like I have grown as an adult, I try to look at the conversation in so many different ways and try to see how I could say things differently. That way she's not offended or anything like that. But there's still some feelings there. And I feel like she still sees me as a 15 year old kid that got her pregnant all those years ago. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now, what about the two other kids? Um, the My youngest son's mom, uh, we're okay. We're okay. It took some time, but we're okay. Um, we co-parent. He comes out and hangs out every weekend, and he stays longer on breaks and stuff like that in school. Uh, we live five minutes away from each other, so it's not that bad. I go see him sometimes during the week. My oldest kid lives in Texas, and I currently stay in Missouri. That's that's a bit more of a travel. I try to use my 
vacation in the summertime to go see him. And uh, as for my third kid, I'm with her. Uh, we're together, and we plan on keeping it that way. <laughs> uh, is it the same woman? The the second and the third kid are they with the same woman? Nope, uh, three women all together. Hmm. Okay, the second yeah, kid. Yeah. Uh, uh, how's how's your relationship with that woman? It's all right. It's all right. It took some time, but we're okay. Okay. And are you married now or have a girlfriend? Um, we're engaged. Fantastic. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Are you happy? Are you excited about life? I am. It's, um, very different when I, when I think back on how much things have changed from being a teenager to now. Mm-hmm. Now calm things are. It's very nice. Mm-hmm. What do you do for work now? Um, I work at a dog. I work at a factory that makes flavoring for dog and cat food. I'm a warehouse guy there. Hmm. Do you ever like? I I don't know. I don't know if this is a thing, but do you do you? I I assume that some of the drug dealing there was like a a, a sense of I don't know adrenaline there. Do you do you miss that or have anything in your life that kind of fulfills that? Yeah, I know. There's there's definitely some times where I um, I miss the fun. Uh, sometimes I tell my fiance that uh, it sucks being a healthy adult. Sometimes I just wanna I want us to have a a fight and just like say horrible mean things to each other and shit for once instead of just being like, hey, I understand that you don't feel very well right now. Uh, whenever you have a moment, let's talk about this. But yeah, I mean, uh, I don't miss it as much, but there are some times that I do miss it as for finding something that takes up that void or that feeling. It's um, probably just video games and uh, hiking and trying to do like regular people shit, I guess. Do you have a different perspective or, or have you developed any kind of thoughts about your relationship with your dad since having kids and you know i think yeah. so if you're 30 yeah if you're 30 your kid is like you know 15 and and you know i about the age that you were when your dad was asking you to deal drugs and stuff like yeah tell tell me those thoughts that you have uh, i would never do that i would never ask my son to do that i would never put any of my kids in any of the situations my dad ever put me through mm-hmm. it's uh as wild as fuck to think what was going on through my dad's mind during that. Uh, I've always thought that maybe, maybe he was too traumatized by whatever happened in his childhood that he couldn't mm-hmm. cope or just like stopped caring at some point. Cause I mean, he had 17 kids. I was the last kid. Wow. So, like another part of me was like, another part of me was like, he's probably just like done with it and just like did a very bare minimum and was like, ah, you know what? Here's an extra thing for you to do in your life. Mm. Mm. Do you talk to any? Do you have any? Do you talk to any of your brothers or sisters? Yeah. Yeah, they're all uh, they're all older than me. They're all like in their fifties, late fifties. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird having conversations with them. I get along more with my nieces and nephews than I do with them. Do you get to see them very often? Not as much as I'd like to. Hmm. Hmm. Do you do you have any friends? Yeah. Yeah. Where where are those friends from? Uh they're from I live here in Missouri now, so they're from Missouri. I still have some friends in Texas. Um I have uh friends that I've made in, I guess in the game that are kind of spread out through the states and stuff. And a couple in Mexico. Hmm. What's your like I was going to say dream in life, but I guess, you know, how are you thinking about life moving forward? Like, what are your goals? What do you want to, what are you thinking about all day when you're thinking about um, the future? I, before, I guess before I had kids, I used to think that I peaked early because of all the vast amounts of money that I used to make. I mean, I guess like to me, it was a lot of money, but to others, it's probably like, yeah, that's not that bad. But to me, I was making a lot of money at that point, And I used to think that I peaked at that time and... Now that I have kids, uh, 
my dream now is to just be a good a good father. I just I want to be involved in my kids' life, and I just want to be there as much as I can and to show them that I love them. Uh, that that's it. That's it. Really. I mean, I feel like my dreams are over. I mean, not that they're necessarily over because I have kids, but like. I've done a lot of fun things in my life that I don't feel like there's a lot more for me to do. And it's, I feel like I'd rather put that energy into my kids and my family and my regular life now, I guess. That's great, man. How'd you meet your wife? Um, <laughs> uh, on a dating app, actually. Which one? Uh, it was called OK, OK Cupid. OK Cupid, yeah. Yeah, I was on yeah. OK Cupid back in college. Yeah, it was a, it was supposed to be a one night stand that ended up being something really great. That's wonderful, man. What's uh what's her deal? What's her life like? Um she grew up very differently than I did. She's five years younger than I am. Um We kind of didn't have the best of childhoods, so I guess we we bond in that, uh, but I mean, we're very, um, we're totally opposites. And it's, it's weird that we even have been together this long, but we, we fit perfectly. Mm. Opposite in what, what kind of way? Um, opposite and the way, in the way that we think, opposite and the way that we grew up and things like that. Like my thought process is different to hers, uh, her childhood. Even though we're, even though it was both traumatic, it was very different than mine. Um, I, I at one point was in a gang. And she was never in a gang. Um, I sometimes joke that I'm the ghettoest thing that's ever happened to her. Bro, you're literally John Marston. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm I'm very happy for you, man. I'm very happy that you're. You, it sounds like um, you've been through a fucking hell of a lot, and it sounds like you sound very just not even just your life circumstances, but just as I'm talking to you in this conversation, you sound like you have a very mature outlook on life and on relationships, and things sound very steady and stable for you. I appreciate that, Al. Of course, man. You ever have the chance to talk about any of this stuff in real therapy? Uh, no, it's always been too expensive. Um, I've always <laughs> used um, mushrooms is a good way for me to work on my inner self. I usually just take a really big dose, and then I understand that the first few hours of the fun stuff are just, are just strictly for fun. But then after that, it's, um, it's some time for Dubious to find out how Dubious works and why he works the way he works. How about how? What's a big dose for you? Um, to date, the biggest dose I've taken is fifteen grams. At once. Fifteen grams, Jesus Christ! Yes, sir. That's I've, I, I like don't think to, I've done um, any more than like three. I'd like to venture out there. Huh? Are you still a pot guy? Were you were you ever like a big pot smoker? Yeah, always, always, always. So I'm I'm very high right now while I'm talking to you. <laughs> um, it is re it is really crazy. I know we said it already, but it is so crazy that people were were locked up. And I think our I don't know anything about this kind of stuff, but are people still locked up for weed? Uh, in in the states that have legalized it, I don't think so anymore. I think they're getting out, and I think they're working on getting those things expunged off the record. Let's say you could go back right now and talk to your 16 year old self or if there's anybody uh listening to this that maybe was in a similar is in a similar situation or anything what would you say to them um i would say to maybe change up what you're doing because it's not going to be nice in the long run or i would just go you're gonna end up being a great person, bro. Keep keep it up. You're doing great. Mm -hmm. But at mm -hmm. some sometimes I think about that, and sometimes I feel like sixteen year old me would want to beat up thirty year old me and think, um, why are we such a bitch? What happened along the way? Why are we like this? 
another part of me would think that it would work out and he would go, holy shit, you're a lot different. I like this you. Mm. What do you think's been the most difficult thing in this process of maturation that you've gone through? Um, the hardest thing was letting go of uh, bad things that happened to me. I used to always blame the world for everything that was going on, and I realize now that it was a lot of it was my fault. I put myself in a lot of bad situations, and I wouldn't feel the way or be the way that I am now if I just not put myself in those situations. This might be a, a tough one, and I, and I hope it's not out of place to ask or anything like that, but do you... Have you ever, or do you think you would ever get to a place where you would forgive your father for any of the stuff he's put you through? I'm trying to. That's what I'm working on right now. I'm trying mm-hmm. to work on letting go of that, that one. That one's by far the biggest one I have. Mm-hmm. Do you talk to your siblings about him at all and get their perspective on it? And if you do, is that helpful? Uh, yeah, I do get the perspective as far as it being helpful. No, because my dad was a asshole to all of us. So we're all in our feelings about it up to a certain extent. And all of us only see it a certain way. And uh, even though they're older than me, I still see that they're very bothered by the pain that he caused to them. So even though I feel like I'm working through mine, I can't really expect them to work through theirs. They see it how they see it. Um, my dad uh, sold one of my brothers and he thinks that he would have had a better life with my dad instead of being sold and having a good life with the parents that he grew up with. Mm. Um, wait, I'm I'm so sorry. You said you, your brother thinks he would have had a better life. You, your brother would have had a better life staying with your dad instead of being sold. Yes. Mm. Mm. And the rest of us are like, no. <laughs> no, we all would have wanted to get sold rather than mm. stay home with him. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> well, man, it's such a it's such a cool thing that you're you're at a place right now where you have healthy relationships with people, and you have the opportunity as a father to be a good dad. You know, to like be the kind of dad that that your dad wasn't and it sounds like you're really there to make the most out of that opportunity and i find that very admirable because uh there's a lot of people who unfortunately get trapped in like that cycle right of like you know my life was shitty and so i'm gonna make my kid's life shitty and so on and so forth and i i know it 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 must take a lot of time and energy and and thoughtfulness to to break that and to become the kind of person that you are today so fucking good on you sir thanks man it's really hard it's really hard it's, it's hard to be a good dad or whenever you didn't have one uh sometimes my son will ask me how why i'm such a good dad and it's weird because i'll be like i don't know man i've never had a good one the only reason i know how to be a good one is because i a bunch of TV dads and shit. I feel <laughs> like your, that's why I learned how to be a good dad at. Who's your favorite TV dad? Um, by far, probably Uncle Phil. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And he's not even a dad, he's an uncle. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, but what he did for him was really awesome. He was there for him a lot more than his actual dad was, and yeah. Hmm. Um, what's your name again? Dubious? Yeah. Have you always gone by Dubious? Uh, no, no. Um, it's just to get my Xbox name, so I just, it's a nice name. I just, I go by that whenever I can. What do you play on Xbox? Um, mainly Call of Duty. I play Warzone a lot. You ever play Grand Theft Auto? I do. Yeah. Do the do the do the drug dealers in Grand Theft Auto talk anything like real drug dealers? No. Uh, 
sometimes like online um gerald that guy he kind of talks like a real dealer but the other ones kind of a little different i guess maybe because gerald was the only kind of dealer that i kind of dealt with hmm. like even, even whenever i'd go into mexico and stuff to go get things uh there was one guy that always spoke very well english there while the other ones did the work hmm hmm um Dubious man, is there any other like? First of all, thanks so much for for coming on here and talking to me about all this stuff. I hope it was like uh, a good experience for you. I don't know how much you like. It was, man. I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. It's That's been awesome. Nice. Um, is there any other aspect of of any of this that you would want to talk about, or anything else you you want to say? Um. Hmm. Probably that drug dealing isn't all that it's looking up to be. All that I'm left now is I don't have anything to show for it besides a bunch of half assed stories that people probably don't even believe. What's your favorite uh half assed story that people don't believe? Um, let's see, one time I went to go pick up um I believe it was like a hundred pounds of Mexican brickweed and uh, to me at that time was I was like this is really fucking cool this is dope for me and um, the guy that I picked it up from was like hey I'm just gonna put these in your trunk and I was like well bro I gotta go back to the border with this he was like it's totally fine uh, before you call me to the call uh, before you get to the border call me and I'll let you know what lane to get into and uh, he I called him he told me the lane to go to and um, the guy just passed me by he uh, walked up to my window and he's like are you so and so and i was like yes i am he's like are you so and so's friend i was like i am so and so's friend and he's like all right go ahead and then i passed with 100 pounds of mexican brickweed in my trunk and i felt like the biggest thing ever with that i was like this is so cool holy shit wait this was to a border agent guy yes yeah oh yeah, that's holy shit yeah, yeah he yeah, was probably yeah, like being go... paid off or threatened by cartels or some shit yeah no um i don't I don't know. I don't know if any of the people that I got from were were cartels, but I knew that it was a good discount. I was paying ten dollars for one pound of weed. Is that that sounds like a that sounds like a pretty good discount? Indeed, it is. Uh, I guess back then, uh, one pound was going for five hundred dollars in my area. So for me to drive out there and get it for ten dollars was a steal. Um. Do you ever talk about any of this stuff? Would you ever do, like, uh, I don't know. I don't know, yeah. How often do you get to, like, talk about this stuff or or, or share uh, these stories? Not, not that much. Not that much. I, I talk about it with my friends every time that they ask mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, but, you know, not really. I'd well, thanks probably, again for, uh... uh... Oh, go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. You're fine. I was just going to say, thanks again for, um... For coming on and, and talking and um, you know when when you 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 I want you to enjoy getting high, being a father, and playing video games in exactly okay, that wow. order. <laughs> Take care, Dubious. Thanks for calling, man. You too, man. Thank you, Al. Hello. Hey, what's up, man? My God, is this Lyle? That's crazy. Yeah, what's up? Is this Nick? This is, yeah, this is Nick here. Nick, you texted me and you said, uh, my name is Nick, I'm 25. I want to talk about sacrificing my childhood for rock and roll. What does that mean? Damn right, man. Well, I grew up starting like pretty young playing music and kind of did that my my whole childhood instead of doing like the normal thing having friends and doing that kind of shit so you I, were, know, I guess i uh you were playing bedroom oh, rock while everyone else was playing call of duty zombies yeah yeah that's right i mean we played a little zombies in there too before practice but yeah our practice schedule was pretty uh pretty rigorous we would do about like five days a week and uh with our first guitarist it actually got to the point where he 
he left the band because he felt, I think he felt maybe he was losing a bit of that that feeling from childhood, like actually getting to hang out with people and do stuff after school with your friends instead of just get done with school, go practice for three or four hours and then go home, do your homework and then do it all again the next day. And this is throughout middle school and high school? Yeah, we started this band, um, and I'll just keep the, the name under wraps and whatnot, but we started this band in, like, elementary. It was probably fifth or sixth grade, and we kept that band going all the way through high school, but it was uh, a couple different guitarists throughout that time. But we had a couple really amazing experiences that we got to do. We got to open up for some some big-name groups and, you know, play all over couple summers we were just lined up every weekend with gigs and that was just a a cool feeling instead of going to i don't know parties and shit we just we played at the parties i guess that's fun though man that really is because i think there there's something at least in my personal life i always felt like there's something about combining your work or no i'm not not even like work but like any kind of like active creation or pursuit with your social life so like i assume after you played at these parties you then went and enjoyed the party and the party was now was now better for you because you were the cool guitar guy up front you know that was that was always a thing you kind of hoped for but i feel like because i never really hung out with a lot of people my social like my feeling of wanting to be social with people wasn't as as out there. So when the gig was done, I just kind of enjoyed packing up, you know, getting paid and then heading home because mm. we had to probably wake up early for school the next day or get ready for practice or another gig. And so it wasn't really the whole, the nine yards of like the sex, drugs and rock and roll because we we're <laughs> just kids at that time. And I mean, we were pretty, I don't want to say like goody two shoes or anything, but we just didn't get too crazy in the drugs or anything like that, which I'm grateful for. Do you really feel like you missed out on, on your childhood? What specifically do you feel like you missed out on? I feel like I really missed out on just making connections with people. Say when you go and see a band or you're at a party and you're hanging out with people listening to the music, I was instead the, the person on stage. And so I didn't really make those connections where I thought I could have. And then as well as just how often we practice, you know, I had uh, the close friend as our guitarist and then the bassist, but the, uh, beyond that, it was just kind of, I didn't, didn't really hang out with anybody. And I, I don't necessarily blame rock and roll, but I feel like I did sacrifice it for the, for the rock and roll in a sense. It was just a, a path that I chose to take. Were you close friends with the other people in the band? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We were very tight. Man. I mean, we still are to this day, too. So, look, man, I I don't know. I mean, it's very... This is a funny thing where yeah. there's a tradition... There's this idea of what a traditional college or high school experience looks like right like it's some kind of john hughes Mm -hmm. movie where everyone's getting laid all the time and and getting high and has this big group of friends and whatnot and i don't know if that exists i think everyone well i mean i it 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 doesn't exist by nature because there's no true collective experience you just have what you Everyone just has individually whatever happened to them. And for you, at least from my That's perspective, really it point. sounds like it sounds to me like you did what, in my opinion, is the best, coolest thing to do, which is to go fuck all of that. Fuck the <laughs> the theater club. Fuck the football games. I'm going to carve <laughs> out my own personal lane and I'm going to do mm-hmm. my thing. And be better yet, you know, it's not like you're, I mean, dude, you know, doing this with your best friends. It's like, I'm going to do my thing with my friends. 
and that's the best thing you could do. That's a li- that's a little bit like I I I feel like what I did. You know, I was doing stand up mm-hmm. as a kid when I was like sixteen, and and my friends and I were making movies, and I didn't go to right. clubs or like big crazy parties. But or you whatever. had your but I had my like, friends, and I had my fun. own world, yeah, my own lane. Friend. Yeah, and it sounds like you know, it sounds like that's what you had. Yeah, and like now that I'm really thinking about it, I think there may have been some sort of as a child, at least some sort of expectation that I felt like I needed to have for a childhood. You know, there was an expectation that I was hoping to meet, maybe in terms of of some social goals, you know, having a circle of friends or whatnot. But then when I really look at it, it, I had my circle. It was just a lot smaller than maybe I intended it to be as a kid. And so it's a really solid point too. Oh man, very few. Like I was, I, I kind of knew everybody, of course, because I was in the band. Everybody knew me as the guy that was in the band, but I didn't really fuck with anybody because I just didn't fit in where I, I grew up necessarily. And so I had probably so I had the two guys in the band with me, and then outside that, maybe maybe two, three people that I could consider friends. It's a blessing. I mean, friendship's not about quantity. Have you ever thought about, you ever That's go to, uh, I do this all the time, I'll go to, if you want to feel better about your life, go on Reddit and go to r slash forever alone. You ever do that? <laughs> I, I don't know if I've been on that one, no. It's, um, I mean, it's it's macabre, but you go on there and you're like, oh shit, it's sick having three friends. <laughs> some people have no, <laughs> some people have no, for like literally zero. That's a, that's a great point. You need to be grateful for what you have, no matter what it is. Mm-hmm. What do you do now? Right now, I'm a, like a server, bartender, cook, kind of the works. Are you still playing music? Oh, yeah. I do a lot of my own, like, like on the side kind of music production where I make my own songs and put them out under a certain name. I have to ask, are you withholding that? And you don't have to tell me anything you don't want to, but... Are you withholding the name of the band because it's a prominent band? Like, would people know what the band is? At least in the area, yeah. We were we played around quite a bit. Like, uh, I don't know, just all in the, the area that we did play, we played a lot. And so people kind of knew us as that band. And I'm not trying to dox myself as well. I just, especially with, like, when it comes to my own music I put out today, it's not really about trying to get big or trying to really make money off of it or get people to know my name. It's more so I just really enjoy the creative aspect of it, the emotional release aspect of it, just kind of getting those feelings out through a different medium of art. Mm. And it's something that's just like really personal to me, but not in a way that I don't want people to hear it. But, you know, there's a time and a place and I just don't think I'm ready for like a large following. I feel like I need to get some more emotional and mental shit on lock before I start to get a following on anything. That's a very emotionally intelligent move because you could just be completely hungry for money and fame and have it destroy Mm -hmm. your general life sense of well-being. You could. Mm -hmm. How's your general life sense of well-being? I think it's pretty good. I mean, like, uh, define that question, I guess. Maybe I'm not understanding that one. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing good, man. I got out of a relationship pretty recently, and that was a a weight off the chest, to say the least. You know, when two people just aren't made for each other and you choose to stay together, it goes downhill. And so I, I got myself out of that situation and moved moved away from that that area cuz I did move away from my home for a little bit but now I'm back in that area somewhat and I'm living life having a good time doing it Do you still play with your friends that you played with in elementary school? No, I really wish we did um but we've just kind of gone our separate ways since then. I think about I want to say probably like three years ago 
we stopped playing just because distance issues and whatnot. Are they still playing music? As far as I know, one of them is. He also puts out music kind of on his own, just as for the same reason that I do. And then the other one, I don't think he plays music as much anymore. His job is pretty demanding for what he does, so he just doesn't have the time. Mm. Do you have... Well, okay, so in high school and college, you said you didn't have that many friends aside from your bandmates, but do you feel like you have friends now? Sort of, yeah. There's a. It's funny, this, you know, a couple of those people from back then, it's, those are the same people that I still consider friends. And I think to this day, I still have a little bit of a hard time just getting out there and making friends, meeting new people, or just... I don't know. I, I I do find comfort in being by myself at this point in life. And I mean, I'm not even that old, of course, but I don't know. I definitely restore that, that social battery when I'm, I'm by myself, you know, if I'm around too many people for too long. I just get really worn out, I guess. So I don't really try to, to meet new people anymore. Hmm. Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult. That's one of the cool thing. I mean, that's one of the cool things I feel like about uh, having a hobby like music, where you know, like we were talking about, your work can also be a social thing. I don't know if you gig anymore, mm-hmm. but oh, I wish. Yeah, you ever thought about doing that? I have. Yeah, I've considered it, thinking like I just need to get a certain amount of songs, and I could just go do some opening shows for some people or something like that, and that would be really fun, or even just an open mic or something shit i don't even need a full set what do you make music about these days i try to write music about whatever i'm kind of feeling in the moment um you know i've got i've got some music that is you know really happy summer vibes kind of like put you in the mood to have a good time be on the beach and shit and then i got some stuff that just gives you the stank face like some underground rap and just kind of like some bars you know so it's really a big variety of types of music that i write about what do you rap about oh man my first song that i ever put out was a rap song and i refuse to put it out on like real platforms anymore um but just because it was a it was a mean song it was a rap like i i got in a in a relationship at a young age and thought that this would be a good expression of that some like taylor swift vibes no no hate (laughs) Um, oh you did you did a diss rap against the ex i did it was it was really mean and immature of me and so at that point i was writing about like it was like a journal that i was putting out into the world with a beat um but then after that i just started writing about like just I don't know, just happy shit, feeling good, that's... looking at the sun. <laughs> that's uh, that's <laughs> nice of you. It, well, it's fun. It's nice of you to look back on it and go like, uh, you know, it's nice of you to look back on it and go like, ah, uh, that was kind of, you know, maybe I shouldn't have written such a uh, a hostile yeah, there's, song there's about that person. Little, because when you think about feeling. Taylor Swift and Olivia Rodrigo, they don't do that at all. They're like, fuck this guy, and I want literally <laughs> right. one billion people to know it. Yeah, I don't know. I just can't feel that. I don't. I don't like putting people in the spotlight because I know I don't like sure. being in the spotlight as much. Sure, sure, sure. As, as weird as that is, coming from from being in this on the stage and whatnot. Hmm. What's next for you? What's your name again, Nick? My name's Nick. Yeah. I don't know what's next, man. I've just been enjoying life, being being independent, trying to gain that independence back and find myself again. You know, just trying to only be better than the person that I was yesterday if I can do that I'm having a pretty good day I like that can I before we go do you have any bars that you could spit for us no (laughs) it's one of those uh, I'm very shitty at freestyle too and that's one of those one of those things I really want to get better at because in a time like this, how cool would that be if I just spit some shit and you're like, okay. I, you know, I, I, I kind of, I kind of knew before I asked you that it would, it would be a no from you, but I did have to try. Yeah. You kind of, you got that feeling. 
But yeah, one of these days you're gonna you're gonna know the name someday, and then I'll, I'll hit you up and say, hey, you remember that time that you had the call with the dude named Nick? And then you're gonna say, yeah, of course I remember that exact Nick. And I would love to get a voice message. For, I would love to get a voice memo from you in the DMs, being like, hey man, I've come to redeem myself, and then you just send me like a minute of of fantastic freestyle rap. Oh, I would 100% do that. I'll get to that point, send it to you. You can put it on whatever the heck you want, or just be for you and me. Either way, that'd make me happy. Nick, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Oh, man. Fuck the computer, but I love the people, man. Take care, dude. Take care. I love you, Gek. Nick, Nick, Nick. I liked what he ended with. Fuck the computer. I don't like the computer. I don't. I don't like being on the computer. I know I'm on the computer right now, but I was thinking about that. Like you know, it must have been so fun being like like a music rock and roll touring person back in the '80s or something like that, where you didn't. There was no Instagram posting, whatever the fuck thing i mean these tools they're double-edged swords because on one hand the computer has enabled uh lots of people to pursue things they wouldn't be able to pursue otherwise such as being a therapy gecko but the other hand oh my god i'm why am i scrolling through facebook at 3 p.m i need to go look at some trees call from big dog concrete and landscaping to Hello? Hey. Hey, how's it going? It's going pretty okay. How's your doing? I'm hanging in there. What's your name? My name's Nick. Nick. Uh, what's happening, hey. Nick? What, uh... Let's see. Your caller ID. I don't usually read caller ID, but, I mean, it <laughs> says it says that you're a landscaping company. You called me from the Big yeah, Dog I'm... Concrete and Landscaping <laughs> Company phone line. Yeah, that's, I got a new number recently, and uh, the caller ID hasn't changed. So everyone sees uh, I'm actually uh, Big Dog Nick now. Wait, so you are not, you don't own a landscaping company? No, no, I don't. That's just the name that came with my caller ID. I don't know why it hasn't changed over. Uh, I got the number through Mint Mobile like months ago. It just still shows it for some reason. Well, that's cool. You got a new phone number and a landscaping company. That's a good ad yeah, for Mint yeah. Mobile. <laughs> well, what's up, Nick? Is there anything in particular you wanted to talk about today? Oh, uh, not too much. I'm taking a new medicine today, so I'm like, feel a, I'm strange today. I'm getting a new perspective. Um, starting school back again. Uh, what do you do in school? Uh, I did never finish high school. I ended up dropping out when I was uh, 17, I think, because I grew up in a bad household. And it's been years, and I'm finally getting back to it. You doing like a GED? No, I'm doing a high school uh, credit recovery. Cause I learned I only had three credits left when I left. Uh, cause it was during COVID, so I didn't know if they pushed me through the classes, which it turned out they did. Or I was going to graduate early, but I didn't know any of that. All I did, we were uh, online, so we were doing it through the computer. And I just stopped showing up during them, and I moved. And then uh, one of my family members went and dropped off the computer. So you're kind of pulling a Billy Madison. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Are you, are you, do you go to a high school, and you're, like, with a bunch of high school kids? Or is it, like, you're with a bunch of other adults who no, are doing the same program? It's, no, it's adult ed. It's online. So I, I'm at home with a computer that they issue out, basically. Do you get to play games on the computer, or is it just school? Just school. But I have so, my own computer for that anyway. How old are you now? I'm 21. Okay, nice. Um, what do you do sort of around that? Do you have any anything else going on? Um, I make art and stuff, but... Um, like I said, I'm taking new medicine today, so I just haven't been motivated to do anything. So mm -hmm. I've been trying to get back into that because I do digital art. I do a little bit of mixed media. 
and um, I have a violin. I played it for years, but I just haven't felt like picking it up and actually uh, playing music again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you made any friends in these high school classes? Not yet. Not yet. What do you hope to do after you're done with these classes? Well, I'm hoping to go to art school or go to school for something that can be useful. I, I haven't thought about college too much. I know uh, I have a couple of friends that went to art school and a lot of people have mixed views on it. If it's something that you can use afterwards, but it's just something I enjoy doing. Well, I don't know how much you've listened to me talk on here, but I... I... Are you, would you take out debt to go there? Um, well, with the student aid we have, I only grew up with uh, one parent and uh, they'd cover a lot of it, but I'd feel bad. I'd, I'd say if I used my one chance to go with relatively less debt on something like art college. So it's been weighing how, on me a little bit. How much debt is relatively less debt? This is not a financial podcast, but I do enjoy having mm-hmm. these conversations. What, how much yeah. debt is not a lot of debt? Um, I'd say 5000 under. I know I could get that in about a, like a small, short, short range. Um, but if it's way, way up there, then it'd be too much. I know, like, probably less than 10000 actually. If it was, right, like, so the price it would of be... used cars, maybe. All right, so it would be about $10,000, like, for all four years, $10,000? Yeah, or for, like, two years, bachelor's or associate's, whichever I end up doing. Okay, I mean, that's not terrible. What's your ultimate goal that, uh, with, with art? Um, well, I thought about doing graphic design some... And then I've thought about doing animation, and I've also thought about doing, like, character design. Okay. Some I mean, I'm... Between those. I'm severe... I'm very anti-college when it comes to things where you don't need to go to school for them. If you if they're paying off, like, 100% of your college and you could get a scholarship, then I think that would be sick. But with $10,000, I mean, you can get... An, you can get the full Adobe Suite... You can go to, I think it's, I want to say it's Lydia.com or something like that, um, where you can go get all these very comprehensive Adobe tutorials. You don't even, you don't even need to, you don't even need to like buy a class or anything because everything you would ever need to know about how to use those programs is on YouTube. And then on the way to that, you can create a, a digital portfolio on the internet and then through that start getting you know commissions for work and whatnot so i just when it comes to these things i'm i'm a big proponent of trying to do it on your own as opposed to institutionally everyone is different and you know look i didn't go to art school i didn't uh you know do any of these things i've only done you know what i do so i don't have the full scope of it but just when when i think about taking out like $10,000 ten thousand dollars in debt i'm like oh my god there's so many things that you can do yeah. with that money and the thing about college is that it's just it's appealing because it's like what everyone does you yeah know? yeah uh and it's a very like classic next step but the universe has changed so much drastically yeah drastically. yeah that's that's what stopped me from getting back to school and stuff i'm like i i feel the same way kind of i'm like i it's something i'd like to do but at the same time i'm like i could probably get a degree where like something uh i forget what it's called it's um it was some type of technician i was thinking about in like medical i'm like i could try that but art that's what i've been doing lately with i'm mostly self-taught i've learned most of what i've known through other animators on youtube and stuff or other people on twitch who do art and stuff right um, so, I don't know, it's your life. I don't want to tell you what to do, but I think I think t- today it's probably the best idea to to learn that stuff on the internet. And then I mean, well, a medical technician that's different because if you want to ever do that, you have to go to school, which is good. Yeah. You know, I'm a big pro- I've always said this. I I think you can learn anything on YouTube. I would definitely hire an artist who learned how to make really good art on YouTube. 
I don't know yet if I would hire the YouTube doctor. I'm sure you could. I'm <laughs> sure you could probably. You probably could learn yeah, how to do heart else. surgery on YouTube. I don't know. Right now, one day, information will be so free and accessible that you will be able to learn how to do heart surgery on YouTube. But for now, I prefer if if I were doing if I were going under for heart surgery that my heart surgeon have gone to an accredited university. So. You know, yeah, but good, good, good for you. I'm glad to hear that you got out of whatever <laughs> shitty thing was going on in your childhood, and you're trying to, you know, improve your life. That's a that's a wonderful thing. Yeah, thank you. It's it's taken a lot to get to the point where I am. I'm thankful for the opportunities I've come across. Is there anything else you wanted to say or talk about before we go? Uh, I I appreciate you making your podcast. I've watched it for like a couple, like two years now, I think, and it got me through some tough times last year. Hell yeah. Thank you, Nick. I'm glad. I'm always wondering if anyone's listening to this fucking thing. So I appreciate <laughs> it. And um, I'll talk to you again. Maybe never, but it was good talking to you in this one particular moment. Yeah, it's good talking to you, too. Have a great rest of your day, you guys. You too, Nick. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Hello, folks. It's Lyle here. That's the end of this episode. But get this. I'm releasing a bonus episode this week. That's right, a bonus episode, an entire extra hour of the podcast that you can listen to by becoming a premium member of Therapy Gecko over at therapygecko.supercast.com. Supercast subscribers get access to bonus episodes. They get a completely ad-free podcast feed of the regular show. They get recordings from my live shows, members-only streams, access to the exclusive Geck Legends Discord, and they help support my ability to continue doing this podcast. So here's a clip from this week's Members Only bonus episode. I've been having an issue lately. I started a new job this year, and the problem I'm having is I'm meeting a lot of new people, and I kind of know that I'm not going to like really hang out with these people beyond the work life. And so I don't really know how to talk to them. I'm having a hard time like socializing properly, I think, I think people think maybe I'm like weird or too focused on work because I don't really know what else to start up conversations about. Do you feel like your curiosity and other people has like uh, waned as you've gotten older? <laughs> it it has waned pretty far. Yeah. If you want to hear this full conversation, you can sign up to become a premium member at therapygecko.supercast.com or find the link in the episode description. That's therapygecko.supercast.com. All right, I have nothing else to say.